Hey guys, it's Morgan coming back to you with another video about the Baja 1000. This one is a review of all the stuff that I took down there, how I performed, all that good stuff. Uh, now this video is going to be relatively long, uh, but I want to make sure you guys stick around to talk about the safety stuff because honestly, it's probably the most important thing uh, to talk about. So this helmet and these knee braces are both things that I firmly believe both save my life and my walking ability. If you guys haven't watched yet, uh, check out the full video on uh, race day. I will quickly show you here the big crash I had. So that was ugly. It was not good. Um, fortunately, uh, team was able to continue. Uh, they got the rider to me, to the bike. He kept going. Anyway, it ended up second Promoto 40 plus, which is pretty rad. I'm really happy about that. But let's talk about all the stuff I did. First of all, I want to address the fact that a lot of you guys thought I was racing this XR down there. No, that was never the plan. Uh, I have raced this XR, this exact XR, in the Baja 1000 before, back in 2006. I soloed the race on this bike uh, successfully, finished the race. Um, 36 hours I was on the bike, it was lovely, <laughs> um, from uh, Ensenada to La Paz. Uh, but no, I was just prepping this to be the pre-runner. I was on a team, we were racing a, a 2018 WR450 uh, built by Ryan Liebelt. This was never supposed to be my race bike, this was just a pre-run bike. And all the things I did to it uh, were just to build it up to be a good pre-runner. And actually, really your pre-runner needs to be just as bulletproof if not more than the race bike because uh, you're not going to get to stop as often for fuel and checkups and things like that as you do during the race and um, there's not as many people out there to help you in case something goes south <laughs> um, so pre-running actually uh, having a good bike for pre-running is crazy crazy important one of the things that got most talked about early on by a lot of you guys was the chain and sprockets. We ran a Tusk chain, their O-ring chain, their high-end O-ring chain, a Tusk front sprocket, but we did run a rear Warp 9 sprocket just because it was so pretty, I didn't want to change it out. But if you look at that chain, that is exactly how it was when I left. No adjustment, that's over 600 miles on this bike, some of it up to 90 miles an hour. Uh, definitely not being nice to it. <laughs> uh, very little lube put on it and it did amazingly well absolutely zero problems so todd york if you're watching i think you owe me uh a chain of sprockets or something like that i bet you something you never really agreed but um anyway it did amazingly well very 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 happy with how that chain and sprocket held up the front sprocket looks great i'll show you guys that up close uh no hooking or anything like that the rear sprocket uh, from warp 9 looks good too um Guys, we ran Nitro Moose, uh, um, uh, the Platinum Mooses. They held up very well to that speed. Lots and lots of speed over lots and lots of miles. Also, the uh, Tusk T45 tires did amazingly well. I actually rode them a couple times before we left. And this is all the pre-running miles. And actually, I think they look great. Uh, I'm not going to take them off yet. Definitely going to get some more miles out of them. The mooses look good. Um, you know, this bike's heavy. That's actually quite a bit of weight on there and it's not squishing down. It hasn't come off the bead. Everything looks great. Uh, got our super rad paint job from Richie Cologne. Thank you very much, Richie and Morgan, for the Mexican flag Honda. That is so cool. I love that so much. Up front, obviously, another T45. No knobs breaking off or anything like that. It actually looks pretty darn good. Of course, Baja isn't a lot of turning, a lot of hard turning. It's a lot of just going straight. So you can actually still see the little teats here. But that front tire did well. Front moose, very, very well. The Warp 9 rims, guys, did amazingly well. Um, I rode them a couple times before we left. Then I tightened up all the spokes, which they needed. Uh, after just a couple rides, they were all a little bit loose. Tightened them all up. I uh, did the every third um, spoke method on these, although it's weird with a Honda because when you do that, you don't get back to the same spoke. It kind of just keeps going until you get them all because they have less spoke. They have 32 spokes instead of 36. So the math works out kind of funky like that. But, um, but anyway, the rims are perfectly straight still. And I hit some big stuff down there, uh, like big stuff going fast and it did really well. 
Uh, other thing we did, we did uh, Mako 360 onto the Scott's triple clamp. Um, I cannot tell you how much I like the Mako 360. Our race bike had flex bars on it. Um, they're just not as good as the Mako 360. I used to have flex bars on this bike. I reached out to Lance to uh, have him let me know if they had a Mako 360 that fit. Turns out they did, uh, which worked out really well. I had to do a little bit of finagling uh, with the bolt length and things like that to make it work, but it works totally great. And uh, yeah, really, really happy with that. Scott steering stabilizer, super important down in Mexico. I'm not a big stabilizer fan on my little bikes uh, for like off-road stuff normally, but in Mexico going that fast, I cannot stress enough how nice it is to have a stabilizer. There are so many times this thing wanted to like, started getting kind of weird and then it kept it together. Uh, Enduro engineering, bark busters, thank goodness didn't really have to use those, no crashes or anything like that, uh, but it worked great. Uh, Baja Designs light. Um, I had people ask me about this light and how I ran it on an XR without a battery. Um, I am using, it's hard to see, but this box here from Baja Designs has a regulator rectifier and a capacitor in it, which uh, if you have enough AC power, which this does, this has a rewound stator with over 200 watts of power on it. Um, <clears throat> if you run that up to that box, it puts AC in, and then with the regulator rectifier and capacitor, it puts out nice smooth DC power without a battery, and it works great. Bike worked great. I'll put up a clip here of me pre-running at night with this bike. Did great, no problems. Obviously had a helmet light on too. Uh, guys, really, really happy that I got to run a counter shocks. Um, these things are amazing. There's a lot of talk about these and people saying, oh, it's snake oil, blah, blah. It, I'm telling you right now, they work. Uh, Nathan doesn't pay me to do that. He was down there with me in Mexico. We actually put this on after my first day of pre-running and I felt a big difference in the way the front end of this bike handled going through the really choppy stuff. So counter shocks, big thumbs up from me. Um, also, he has a full money back guarantee, guys. Countershocks.com, go on there, take a look. It's whatever, it works. That's all there is to it. Um, I think that's it on the bike, guys. That's about it on the bike. I didn't do anything else to the motorcycle because uh, it's just an amazing bike. I had put a new top end in this. If you haven't checked out that series of videos, uh, I think it's just under the XR play playlist. Go check that out. Uh, me doing a top end, uh, new valve seals, new piston, new valves, all that good stuff. And the bike was perfect, didn't burn a drop of oil, ran like absolutely crazy fast the whole time I was down there. Honestly, I kind of wish I'd been racing this bike in my section. I think I probably wouldn't have ended up crashing just because of how heavy and how stable these bikes are. Um, or I would have crashed and it would have been a lot worse. I don't know. <laughs> um, but it's a brilliant bike. It did really well. All the things we did to it were perfect. It was just amazing bike to ride. All right, real quick, I got to mention the biggest sponsor of the channel is Rocky Mountain ATV MC. Huge thank you to them for the tires, the chain, the sprockets, all that stuff. Uh, massive thank you to those guys. Also, please shop local first if you can i really 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 cannot stress that enough but if you cannot shop local you don't want to shop local or you don't like the guys local or they don't have the stuff you need please use the link in the description uh in this video uh, to go to rocky mountain atv mc and then buy stuff through that link it helps us out it helps you out it helps rocky mountain out uh, they're an amazing company they take very very good care of me uh, they're employee owned. They're based here in the United States. They sell things from all over. Yes, they do have some overseas stuff, China stuff, uh, but they also sell bulletproof designs and Mako 360s and Scott steering stabilizer, I think. They sell a ton of stuff made in the US. So um, they're an amazing company. So make sure you check that out. Also, really happy to announce I've been picked up uh, by Onyx Offroad as a brand ambassador. Um, so I have a link in the description also for that. If you want to use that to sign up for Onyx, then you will end up uh, saving 20%. I will get a little bit of a kickback and you'll have the best off-road mapping thing out there. And I'm going to do a video uh, here pretty soon showing how I use it to build rides. Actually, I just built a ride here that I'm putting on 
Uh, hopefully this spring, we're going to do a big thing. I'm calling the Peach Creek Mega Loop. It's all of Peach Valley and all of Dry Creek all in one day. And I'll show you how I built that and then how you can share it via GPX or any other way. So. All right, guys, let's talk about these Asterix carbon cell knee braces. Uh, I have been using the Mobius knee braces now for the past like six years, and I really, really like them. I like them a lot. I actually just gave them to my kid, Thomas. He's just over there out of the camera um, because I think they're very good. They're very safe. Um, they've done me very well. They've kept me from a lot of injuries, but I wanted to try something a little bit lighter, a little bit slimmer uh, and a little more modern. So I ended up buying these from Rocky Mountain ATV, but I did purchase them. These were not free. Uh, they are the top of the line, high zoot carbon knee braces. Uh, they're not as adjustable as their uh, ultra cell. So you can't change the calf or the thigh and calf um, cup on these. They're just set because they're carbon, but they're way lighter uh, and way smaller. So I measured myself using their measuring chart, got the ones they said to get, they fit perfectly. Um, there's no better test of any gear than going to Mexico and pre-running and racing the Baja 1000 because you spend an inordinate amount of time on a motorcycle. Uh, that's all there is to it. You just are on the bike day in, day out, and you know for hours and hours and hours at a time. So these things did so, so, so well. They were super comfortable. Um, I did not use their knee sleeves. I use my own knee sleeves that are like uh, nylon. They send cotton ones, which are, I'm sure they're fine, but I like the nylon ones. Uh, things kind of, they breathe a little bit better and um, things slip past them better. So anyway, I use those. I like them. I've, I will try their knee socks that come with them, but anyway, I like the nylon ones. So did that. They felt great, super comfortable uh, through all my pre-running and then the big news, guys, is in the wreck. I went over the bars. Again, I'll show you that quick wreck. There we go. <laughs> that wreck. Over the bars, legs got hung up in the bike, and my left leg uh, is now bruised up here and down here from where it tried to flex and go backwards and try to flip my knee inside out. This kept that from happening, even with a very heavy WR450 pile driving me into the ground uh, and me being all hung up in the thing. It did rupture my hamstring. That's why I'm limping around and not doing all the <laughs> great walking right now. But this thing, I really truly believe that this, this is my left one, saved me from a massive knee injury uh, down in Mexico. And I could not be any happier about that. I. Uh, these things are terribly expensive. They're over $800. I guarantee you this saved me way more than that in knee surgery. Um, I, my hamstring, while it is uh, very painful, I don't have to have anything done to it. So um, I'm very, very happy with how these performed. Uh, they're just, yeah, they're amazing. I can't recommend them enough. Go to Rocky Mountain ATV through our link buy a set. If they're out of these, which my, I were, they were out of these for a long time, what you can do is just click on the uh, email me thing. I'll see if I can put it up here real fast, me doing it. You click on the email me underneath the thing to tell, it'll email you when the size comes back in and you can order it. That's what I had to do. Uh, they couldn't pull any like strings for me or anything like that. I just had to wait. Very glad I did. It's got a great patella cup on it to protect you from impacts, things like that. It doesn't weigh much. They're just over a pound a piece, which is really, really, really light. Um, in my opinion, the only thing better than these would be a set of uh, CTI, you know, custom built ones. And I'm sure those are quite a bit better, but they're also quite a bit more expensive or require a uh, doctor's, you know, prescription. So these things are rad, guys. Highly, highly recommend them. Yeah, I really believe they saved me a ton of money, a ton of recovery time and all that stuff. All right, guys, last thing we're gonna talk about today is this helmet. These, this is the Fly Formula Carbon S with the smart technology. Um, it keeps crash information, things like that. It also can call people on the list if it's hooked up to your phone. I did not have it hooked to my phone because I knew I was gonna be out of cell coverage. Um, the emergency thing does not work if you don't have cell coverage. So 
don't think that this is like some sort of safety, you know, parachute and just in case, you know, like, ah, go do whatever you want to do and just take risks. Uh, if you don't have cell coverage, just not calling anybody. It's not going to call EMS or anything like that. Um, so I didn't have it hooked to my phone, but it does store the data from a crash uh, if you crash. As you can see, I crashed. Uh, the big crash landed on the back of my helmet, obviously coming forward. I was like tucked over. Anyway, it was bad. Um, I reviewed my video because I did get knocked out. I did lose a little bit of consciousness. I don't really remember the actual crash. Like I don't remember hitting the rock that and put me in over the bars. But uh, so I reviewed the crash. I was out for about five seconds. Um, at least I was real quiet for about five seconds. And then you hear me going, <laughs> and putting air back in my lungs because I'm sure I knocked the wind out of myself because I broke some ribs. Um, that's obviously very scary. But uh, after that, I remember really everything uh, that happened. So I remember the guys coming by, me telling them to hit the button on the bike, the panic button, all that stuff. So this thing, I really do believe, saved my life. It hit the ground very, very hard. Uh, it recorded the, the crash. It showed it as 99 GF or 99.2 GF. And that is like small G, big F. That's not G-force, like that's not 99 times the weight of my head hit that's not the same as like pulling two G's, three G's in a jet or something like that. Um, it's a different calculation. Someone uh, online on my socials knew more about that than me. I really don't know that much. I'm gonna do some more research and you guys can too. Make sure you check out, go to fly racing and check out all the information on this stuff. But that's basically, it's interesting because it confirmed what I knew by watching the video. Because I was watching the video, you can see my Stella on the bike, which is the speedometer. GPS tracker thing. You can see that it says at one point right before I'm doing like 34 miles an hour. And so I was somewhere between 34 and 30 and 40 miles an hour when I crashed. And if you look up what the 99 GF is, it is equivalent to going from 35, 36 miles an hour to stop right now. Um, that's really not good for, <laughs> for your head. And this thing kept me from, I never had a headache. I don't have any lasting kind of issues. Um, I didn't get a CAT scan because I was already back in the United States long after, but my head feels fine. Um, the helmet I'm sure is junk. I haven't really um, inspected it. We're not gonna wear it again. We're gonna get a new one. I, I actually have another formula uh, carbon that I use more for filming. So that one's the one that's gonna get pressed into service now. We'll try to see if we can't get another uh, one of these with the S technology in it. Uh, here soon because I really do like that technology. I think it's really good. I think it's a real big benefit in safety um, Just keeping track of that stuff. Also that way, you know, it's like man, you know, you hit your head like ah, how bad was that? Well, you can look it up Even if you didn't have your phone hooked up to it and see how bad it was and make a decision as to whether or not You're gonna keep the helmet or get rid of it. So I think this thing's amazing again You can get these at Rocky Mountain. I don't know how many they have right now. I don't know if they're in stock but I've been wearing the fly formulas now for four or five years and I am so happy with them. So, so, so happy with them. I just think they're really light. They're really safe. They're very comfortable for my head. Um, everybody's head is different. So I hope that you get to try them on obviously uh, before you just buy one. Um, also, if you're watching this right around uh, after Thanksgiving before Christmas of 2023, they have these on sale, not the S model, but the formula carbon uh, last year's colors and stuff like that they have some crazy deals they also have the formula cc and formula cp which are just as safe they just don't have quite as light a shell or as much breathing uh, so they're a lot less money i think they have one the formula cp one of the formulas they have for like 99 dollars, and that's what my kids wear they're very 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 good helmets guys everything that i did that i prepped and got ready for the race did amazingly well I want to show you one other thing that I did for the race that actually was crazy important. I didn't get to do a video of it while I was down there. We were too busy, but one second. All right, if you guys have been watching the channel uh, for a while and the whole Baja prep, you know that I put these lights from Colite on this van. I cannot tell you how important those things were. 
Uh, we were doing a lot of driving at night because uh, we were pre-running at night and running up and down the roads. And then we blasted all the way back to the United States after my crash a lot of time at night on little tiny Mexican roads in the middle of nowhere. Those lights made the difference between being able to just hammer down and go and um, having to go really slowly. They're incredible. And this van is a 2020. It's new. It's got good lights and all that stuff. Those things make all the difference in the world. Um, I will put a link in the description for those too. If you want to buy those, they're amazing. Uh, wiring them up was incredible. Uh, the comes with everything you need, the harness, the switch. Every, they were so, so good. And you guys know me. I would not. I know they gave them to me. I'm not going to tell you they're good if they're not good. And I don't know what the price point is on them. I know they're a lot less than like buying Baja Designs or KC or something like that. But they are stupid bright. I don't know the lumens. But the lumens would be stupid. That's, that's all you need to know. They're stupid. They're incredible. <laughs> Absolutely incredible. And I guess the last thing, I've, I have no affiliate link or anything like that, but we ended up with a Starlink that I took down there. Guys, that's a game changer. Middle of nowhere, Mexico, you can fire that thing up if you have AC power. And I guess they have DC stuff. I'm going to look into starmount.com and might even send them this video and see if they want to help me out. They have some really cool stuff because guys are running around with them mobile on their vans and trucks. It is like having your home badass Wi-Fi everywhere you go. It's so cool. You can make phone calls, download movies, whatever you need to do um, everywhere. And it is freaking amazing. Thank you for joining me for all these Baja videos. Uh, it's been a lot of fun. I cannot wait to get back down to Baja again and bring you guys along again because that was just an absolute blast. And I know we can win this thing if we get back at it. There's my kid. <laughs> oh, and everybody who says they like this truck, yeah, it's awesome. It's a 74 power wagon. It's his. We need to put wheel bearings in it. It'll be back on the road. So anyway, I love you guys. We'll see you on the next one.